Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share with you my knowledge of morphing animation in After Effects. In this video, I'll cover some topics on morphing, such as the benefits of morphing, how to use it correctly, a comparison of good and bad morphing animation, where we should use it, and then I'll animate a word mark using the morph technique. This way, you can understand how to animate a word mark in After Effects with the morph technique. Alright, so let's start this class. Morphing is very common in the motion design world, but very few artists or animators use it correctly because of its complexity. Let me tell you the benefits of this morphing animation. One of the benefits of morphing is that it makes the animation very attractive and impressive. A good morphing animation easily catches the attention of viewers. Also, it's a symbol of professionalism. Anyone can easily understand that you are very good in motion design. Let's see where we can use it. So where should we use morphing? Well, you can use it in logo animations, character animations, product animation, or any animation concept. The cool thing is that it looks beautiful if you do it correctly. All right, so let's see the first example of good and bad morphing animation. If you see design A, it looks so smooth and natural. On the other hand, design B lacks rhythm and the morphing animation seems random and weird. Okay, so let's animate the word mark in After Effects. So, I just opened After Effects, and this is our word mark that we'll animate. Let me show you the composition settings first. Okay, for your reference, I'm using the Gil Sans Ultra Bold font for this text. Now, if we want to manipulate the shape of this text, we have to convert this text into a shape layer. To convert this text layer into a shape layer, select the layer, then right-click, choose Create, Create Shape from Text. Now we got a new layer, which is a shape layer, and now we can change the shape in this shapes. But as you can see, there are three letters, and these letters are in the same layer, and we have to separate them into different layers. But before that, let me hide this text layer. Also, we can add guidelines with the help of the ruler into this composition as a reference. To turn on the ruler, press Ctrl plus R. By the way, you can see the keyboard shortcuts at the top of the screen. Then simply click and drag the lines like this. I'm adding guidelines into all edges of the shapes. After adding guidelines, let's separate them into different layers. So the easiest way to separate them that I know is to rename this shape to B, then duplicate it two times. Now we have three letters, so each layer for each letter. Okay, so after that, open the B layer drop-down menu, and under the contents, you can see all the three letters. Simply select all the letters except B and delete them. Now, we got only the B shape into this layer, and we can animate it easily. We have to repeat the same thing with the second layer, like renaming the O, then go to the drop-down menu of the O layer, and under the contents, Select all the letters except O and delete them. I hope you understood that we can separate the individual letter into different layers. Let's move forward. As you can see, I separated all the letters into different layers. Let's animate the X first. I'm using the path of this shape to animate this X letter. To see the path properties, select the layer and search for the path. Then add keyframes at the first frame. Then move forward to one second, and add one more keyframe here. Drag the time indicator to the first frame. Now you can see I can change the shape of this text, and the manipulated shape data is stored in this keyframe. If I drag the time indicator to the second keyframe, the shape is changing or transforming into its original shape. Because this keyframe contains the data of the original shape. Which means if I drag the time indicator anywhere before this keyframe, and change the shape, then go back to the last keyframe, the shape automatically transforms into its original shape. Hope this short explanation helps you understand how path keyframes work in After Effects. Alright, so just delete the keyframes and add a new one at the first frame. Now we are ready to change the shape of this letter. But before that, check this snapping box. It will help you snap the path points with the guidelines. Alright, to change the shape, select the path point and drag it like this. As you can see, it's snapping to guidelines automatically because we checked the snapping box. 
It will save your time, and it's very helpful to snap perfectly. You can see I just changed the shape to a box. If I drag the time indicator forward, the box transforms into its original shape. Let's see the preview. It's very static, and I want more movements, so I just copy the last keyframe and paste it here so that I know the original shape of this letter. Then I am changing the shape like it's squishing. That's looking good. Now let's add one more keyframe at here. Once again, I copy the last keyframe and paste it here. Then I'm changing the shape, but this time I want to expand it like this. Let's see the preview. Okay, so that is too much. Let's fix this. And then let's set the RAM preview. I'm good with these movements. Let's make the linear keyframe to easy ease keyframe. If you want to learn more about keyframes, you should check out this tutorial where I explained about keyframes. After making the easy ease keyframe, the graph editor looks like this. And our animation looks so natural and smooth. Now it's time to animate the box, and I'm using scale properties of this shape to animate the box. First thing first, select the pen behind tool. Then select the anchor point and place it at the bottom of this shape. Then go to the first frame and open the scale properties and add a keyframe. Then go forward, make one more keyframe. Then turn off this link button, because if I change the value without turning off the link, the shape behaves like this. That's why I'm turning off this link. Basically, this is the X value of the shape. That's the Y value of this shape. I hope this short explanation helps you understand scale linking. Now let's change the Y value of the scale to 0%. Then go forward in the timeline. Let me drag the path keyframes forward so we can animate the scale easily. Okay, so, and add a keyframe. Then change the value of the scale from 0 to 105%. At the third keyframe, change 100 to 95%. Let's see the RAM preview. It's so quick, so let's slow down it. Select all the scale keyframes and hold Alt and click and hold the last keyframe and drag it like this. This is the quickest way to slow down the animation. Nice, let's drag back the path keyframes and ease ease the scale keyframes. That's looking so good and satisfying, isn't it? I hope you understood the concept of morphing and how to animate it in After Effects. But wait, there are two letters remaining to animate. And I want you to watch this tutorial to the end, so that you can understand better how to animate a complex shape like B, and also how to make a morph animation entertaining. Welcome to part 2 of this class. So, this is the O letter in this layer. And we will animate this letter using the path of this shape as we did before. First things first, go to the search panel and type path making sure the layer is selected. In this layer, you can see there are two paths. Compared to the previous X shape, there is only one path, but in this shape, we can see two paths. Let me explain. This path properties refer to the outer shape, this one. And these path properties refer to the inner shape, this one. All right, this is clear. Now I'm adding keyframes at the first frame by clicking these stopwatch icons. Then move the indicator to one second and add keyframes once again. At this point, I would like to remind you that if I go back to the first frame and change the shape of O, then move the time indicator to the last keyframe, the shape of O transforms into its original shape. One more thing is if I change only the inner shape, which is path two. So in the timeline panel, only one keyframe generates in path two. This way, we have more control to animate this shape using the path. All right, let's get back to the first frame and animate this shape. 
Let me expand the composition view. All right, so we want to change this outer shape into a box. But as you can see, the points of this shape contain handles. And in this case, we have to remove them to save time. Just simply select the four points one by one, then hold Alt on the keyboard and click on one of them points. It will remove the handles. Keep in mind that we did not remove all points handles. We removed handles only from these points. Okay, next, simply select the points one by one and change the position of them like this. Perfect, so we just changed the circle into a box. And you can see the transformation is so clean and smooth. Now it's time to animate the inner shape. Simply select all the points by holding Alt on the keyboard and selecting all. Then double click on one of the points so you can see this box. Then simply click here and move the box like this so that the inner shape disappears. Let me show you how it's looking. After that, move the time indicator forward a bit, then copy the second keyframes and paste them here. Again, move the time indicator slightly and copy the first keyframe and paste it here. Then copy the third keyframe and paste it here. Check the RAM preview. Then simply select the keyframes except this one and ease them. Let me adjust a bit to increase the speed of the blinking animation. That's good. Now I can copy these keyframes and paste them here to get two times blinking. I feel it should be a little fast. That's perfect. Let's fix starting keyframes. First, make it easy ease. Then select those keyframes and drag them this way. Now one thing is missing, which is scale animation. So as we already animated the X letter using scale value, we are going to use those keyframes for this letter. But first, drag the keyframes forward. Then copy the scale value of X. Next, select the O layer and make sure the anchor point is placed at the bottom of this shape. Then move the time indicator to the first frame and paste the scale keyframes here. All right, so one last thing we have to do is drag back the keyframes to get the perfect position. Let's check the preview. Nice. That's good. All right, so in this part two, you learned how to animate a shape that has two paths. Next, we'll learn how to animate a shape that has three paths. Welcome to part three of this class. All right, let's solo the B letter so that we can focus on only one shape. Then I'll open the paths of this shape. Now, Pay attention here. You can see three paths in these shapes. So the first path refers to this shape. The second path refers to this shape. And the third path refers to this shape. I hope everything is clear. To animate this shape, we follow the same rule. Place the time indicator at one second and add keyframes. Then go back to the first frame and add a keyframe only for path 1 because we are going to animate path 1 first. Let me zoom in so you can see it better. Alright, now select one of the points of the outer shape, which is path 1, and move it like this. Also, we can adjust the handles individually by holding Alt and changing the handles like this. Let's see how it looks. All right, so we have to do it manually and carefully because it's a complex shape compared to the X and O letters. After changing the shape, let's see how it's looking. Okay, that's good for now. Let's create one more keyframe between these two keyframes. And change the shape like this. 
I'm just trying to push it into the inner side and expand it as we did with the X shape before. Let me drag these keyframes this way to increase the speed, then move the time indicator between these keyframes and select path points and drag them this way. Let's see how it's looking. Alright, I'm happy with the movements. Let's turn them into easy ease keyframes. Wow, now it looks so natural. After adjusting a bit, we drag the other path keyframes here. Then add some reference keyframes like this. Then go back to the first frame and change the shape like this. Then go to the second keyframe and move the shape this way. One last time at the third keyframe, change the position to this way. Let's see the preview. Alright, that's good movements, but I want some variations, so I just select those keyframes and move them forward a bit. That's nice. It's time to make them easy ease. Wow, that's so satisfying, isn't it? If you followed the tutorial, you already know how to animate this box as we did before, so I'll skip this part. It's time to arrange the shape layers to get variations. Simply drag the O and X layers slightly like this, and that's it. Alright folks, I hope you enjoyed this class, and I explained it to you in a simple way. However, if you have any questions or doubts, the comment section is always open for you. That's it for now. See you in the next video.